Hello, I'm Judy Vitale, and I'm here with your weekly horoscopes at work forecast for the week of October 9th through 15th, 2017. This is a very exciting week, especially if you're a Scorpio or you have Scorpio in your chart. Jupiter is coming to your sign. Yeah, everybody wants Jupiter in their sign. Why not? Jupiter is the planet that brings us a sense of optimism and expansiveness and, you know, really good luck. I always say it's kind of the thing if you've ever lived in an elevator building or worked in an office or even just gone to an office where there's an elevator and you push the button and it comes like that. You put your hand up in the air and the taxi cab comes, you know, or you just, you know, go and, and, and you, you buy a lottery ticket and, and you hit something. I'm not guaranteeing that, by the way, because if I knew how to predict the lottery, do you really think I would be sitting here? But anyway, <laughs> um, Jupiter is a wonderful planet to have in your sign. So Scorpio people, please use this opportunity that you're getting to do your very best work. And I know that you're all hard workers and that this is going to come out to be a very good year for you. Those people also who have cancer and Pisces in your charts are also going to feel a very good feeling from having um, Jupiter and Scorpio. You'll have a trine. And then those of you who have Taurus and Leo and Aquarius in your charts are also going to feel the effects of Jupiter. It's going to be a little bit different. It'll feel almost like an excess. But it's better to have that excess than there is to have a lack. So um, use it. Every opportunity that comes by, it's not going to be there forever. So jump on it, okay? That's the news. That's a really big piece of news. And then another pretty big piece of news, Venus is moving signs, moving into Libra, into a sign that she just loves. This is one of her houses, and she just loves all the beauty and the sweetness and the romance. So this is a really good time to make romantic moves and also just to be nice to one another. So, you know, that would be a really great thing in this world that we live in. And we also have several void, of course, moon periods this week. That's those pesky periods of time where you don't want to make major purchases, have important meetings, sign contracts, that kind of thing. Whatever it is that you have planned is not going to turn out exactly the way that you hoped when the moon is void, of course, and I'll alert you to those as I go through these. So Monday, we start with a Gemini moon, and Monday is not the easiest day I've ever seen because there are going to be a lot of kind of irritating interactions with the planets. The moon will be square to Neptune. And then also Mercury will be square to Pluto. There'll be people trying to overpower one another through words, more or less. And then the sun square Pluto as well. And so that's that's kind of nasty. That's just people, you know, really saying, I'm more powerful than you are. No, I'm more powerful than you are. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on in your life as well as in the world on Monday. On Tuesday, the moon goes void, of course, at 624 p.m., and stays there till 11.38 p.m., so you're going to want to get everything done during the day, but you'll be so busy celebrating Jupiter's arrival in the sign of Scorpio at 9.20 a.m., and there's a lot um, of interaction with the moon, but these are all pleasant interactions, so I think Tuesday is a really good day, and it's great another time to like take some new beginnings on, maybe after you've decided after the um, the harvest moon and Pluto going direct a few weeks ago, now you're really ready to do something. This is a good day to get started. Okay, and then on Wednesday, the 11th, um, the moon will be in Cancer. And this is a time when people really want to kind of take care of themselves and take care of others. So uh, allow that nurturing feeling to enter your consciousness on Wednesday. But be aware that Mars and Saturn are squaring off. And so this is a little bit of resentment. If you decide to do something nice for someone, do not... Try to think of what you're going to get back in return. You may not get anything. If you're going to give, give. And don't think about what you, you're going to be getting back as a result, okay? And uh, that's on Wednesday. Thursday, we're good most of the day on Thursday in terms of the moon. It's still in Cancer. You're probably going to want to eat the things that you maybe shouldn't eat, but they feel like taste really, really good. So, you know, it's okay. It's a lot about food. It's a lot about gathering with family, that kind of thing. And, um... This is all good until the moon goes void, of course, at 11.59 p.m. on the East Coast. But, you know, in other time zones, you know, adjust accordingly and be careful about your plans. On Friday the 13th, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Friday the 13th is just, a, you know, to me, a lot of these numbers that are associated with dates don't mean a whole lot because our calendar, the one that we use, is just superimposed over the number of days that we have. So Friday the 13th is Friday the 13th. I was born on Friday the 13th, but you're probably not surprised to hear that. Anyhow, 
Um, the moon will be in Leo on this Friday the 13th. People will be in a very gregarious state of mind in that kind of mood. So, um, you know, capitalize on that. Uh, use it to make a presentation or to ask somebody how you can show them what your idea is so that they can back your idea and allow you to go forward with it. And it's great for you salespeople as well. Leo Moon always is because it's like that great dramatic presentation ability that Leos do so very well. Now, on Saturday, we have Venus moving into Libra. So, you know, it's a nice weekend for romance, if, if that's the thing. And if you're working on uh, Saturday, um, that's fine, too. Venus in Libra is very good for being charming and being charmed. So that's what's going on on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we have a short void, of course, moon period from 1.27 a.m. until 7.19 a.m. on Sunday. And um, after that, the moon goes into Virgo. Good old Virgo. We can like, begin to get organized and get set for the week to come. As you might have noticed, things are speeding up a little bit because we have had so many influential um, events in, in the skies these last few weeks, like you know, I mentioned earlier. And um, this is no exception. On that day, actually, the 15th, I will be with John, Jana Hawkinjaws. Um, teaching a yoga and astrology class at Inhale Pittsburgh. If you're interested in that, please see uh, the website inhalepgh.com and uh, sign up. We're going to be talking about how astrology affects our bodies and kind of taking after the Chinese custom of changing our routines, our physical routines to match what's going on in the, the seasonal cycles. Okay, so we're going to use yoga to do that. And Jana is a brilliant yoga teacher. And I'm um, going to be there talking about the astrology of the situation. So that's going to be really cool if you're in Pittsburgh. If you're not in Pittsburgh, I can still work with you. I do everything over the Internet these days as well as the telephone. And who knows, I might be coming to your town, as they used to say in that old TV show. So um, you can always reach me if you have needs that um, I can serve you with that might involve anything from transpersonal coaching to clinical hypnotherapy to um, beautiful EMDR, another way of, of getting those unconscious thoughts out of the back of your head so that they stop driving you to do stupid stuff. <laughs> and then also I do Reiki and yoga and, of course, astrology. It's Judy, J-U-D-I, at readthestars.com.